welcome you guys here tonight to the Faith Griffin Men's Event. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for coming out on a Friday night. I want to especially thank those of you that this is your first time coming to Faith and Victory. Yeah. I would be. I would not do my job if I didn't invite you to come to church on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Sanctuary, got services there, 9 11, stuff for the kids, all the free black coffee and drink. <laughs> uh, and you get to park in the parking lot too, don't remember. Uh, <laughs> no, all joking aside, man, I'm so glad that you guys are here tonight. This is, a, this is a blessing for me, I know it's a blessing for Demetrius. Um, he's going to talk for probably about 40 minutes. Um, and then, yes. Uh, Somebody asked to leave. Um, uh, and then after that, we're going to do just a little Q&A, mm -hmm. where you guys can ask fun questions about other senior players. Yeah. 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 We're not going to ask any questions about Golden Tate, so don't talk. Oh. 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 Golden Tate rule. Oh. Oh. So. Or Percy Harvey. <laughs> so uh, just a little backstory. Uh, Demetrius, uh, Demetrius works out at my gym. <laughs> I haven't seen you at the gym, Casey. Ooh. No, it's not a guy's event unless you're jabbing each other here. So, uh, Demetrius was uh, up at the gym, and I'm friends with his trainer. And so, when I, when I, hey, don't talk, young people. Yeah. Uh, so I'm friends with this trainer, so I was in there one day and, and, I, and I seen him over in the corner squatting like 500 and something pounds. And I went up to his trainer and I was like, dude, who's that guy over there? He goes, oh, his name's Demetrius, man. He's, he's uh, going to try to walk on and make it to the Seahawks. And I thought, good luck. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, that's, that's a feat, right? I mean, to walk on and make it onto the Seahawks. And so, uh, I, I can't, I can't lie, I was a little starstruck. So I tried to, I tried to slow play it, you know? So I just kind of walk around a little bit, and make it seem like I wasn't trying to talk to him. <laughs> Demetrius is so nice that he introduced himself to me. He's like, hey, my name's Demetrius. I'm like, oh yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. And so, uh, over a few months, when, uh, after he had made the team, and then we'd see each other in the gym, I guess probably like five or six months ago, I asked him, I said, hey man, would you ever be interested in coming out to our church and speaking to some of our guys? And he was like, man, I'd be honored. I'd love to do that. And so, um, I just, and I always tell this story to, to demonstrate the kind of character that he has. Like, it's cool that he plays for the Seahawks and all that other stuff. It's great. But he's just a man of character, man. And, and my, my son and I were working out together at LA Fitness in the morning. And so we would see Demetrius there because Demetrius went to be in Gabe's gym. And uh, right here, yeah, the horse. <laughs> and so I introduced him. To, I introduced him to Gabe, and then it, it, a few months had passed, and I saw Demetrius again. And he goes, "Hey, Matt, it's nice to see you." And he said, "How's your son Gabe doing?" And and uh, and I just, you know, like that's character. You know what I mean? Yeah. About three months later, and he remembers my son's name. And yeah. I was like, dude, he's a, he's the man. He's got he's got good stuff. And so. Uh, I hope that you guys get blessed with what he's going to talk about tonight. Just give him your undivided attention. Mm -hmm. But with no further ado, I want to introduce to you Demetrius Bronson. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy. Happy I'm up here. Uh, first off, I want to give 
Thanks to, uh, to Pastor Matt for uh, giving me this opportunity to, to be able to share my story and to be able to share my, my journey with you guys. Um, it's not often, this is actually my first speaking engagement, and for him to, to want me to do that, you know, in his setting, in his church, uh, I just want to say thank you for that. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, gosh. Um, yeah, so, you know, uh, Demetrius Bronson, you guys, uh, I've met most of you guys, um, and uh, um, this journey that I'm going to take you on, it's, uh, it's quite the journey. It's, uh, it's, um, I'll try to keep it under 40 minutes. When I was practicing, uh, the <laughs> well, if I start getting stink eye from my pastor, I don't This, uh, this journey I'm going to take you guys on, it's, uh, this is one that I, I haven't talked about it, and uh, it's actually the first time that I've uh, really came out and, and told my story, so this is the first for you guys, it's the first for me, and, and I'm, I'm excited, and I uh, hope you guys are too. Uh, and uh, here we go, so uh, I went to Kidwood, uh, there you go, I know we got a couple of Kenridge and a couple of Cayenne. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I went to Kent, uh, Kentwood, um, home of the Conks, and I uh, actually grew up in Kent, um, probably about 15 minutes from, um, from Kentwood. Um, so I'm a Washington native, uh, born and raised here. Um, and I yeah, chose to go to Kentwood. And uh, going there, gosh, I, that's where my, this future kind of started, started rising. Um, I was the first uh, true freshman, true ninth grader to ever play and start on a varsity team there. It was, it was the first year that they um, introduced, I think we were the guinea pig year. Um, it was the first year that they introduced the ninth, or brought out the ninth graders up to high school around the, around the Canada area. So I was the first, first uh, ninth grader to, to, to play and to start up at Kentwood. And at that time, I really didn't know. I was kind of still finding myself didn't really know how, how good I was, still really don't know that, still kind of searching and finding that. And, uh, but there was, a, there was a hype starting, starting to go around. There was a buzz starting to go around. Gosh, you guys, you guys know about this freshman that, that's, going, that's, that's playing? Or, he's fast, he's big, and, and I'm oblivious to everything. I'm like, you guys talk about me? You know, I went to, went to um, Rudy Junior High. I was um, somewhat successful. <laughs> Actually, uh, one of my good friends back there, he actually started over me. Raise your hand, Mike. He actually started over me at uh, Meridian Junior High. So he always, he always bugs me about that. But um, <laughs> I try not to make him mad uh, too much. But yeah, so I'm at Kentwood, and you know, I'm, I'm going through the years at Kentwood. I'm, I'm this. this uh, Everybody keeps pumping me up. Year after year, I'm, I'm breaking records. I still have the records over there at Camp Wood, the uh, Russian records and the TD records. And I'm just, it's just this guy that's supposedly, from what they were saying, kind of the savior from the team. Um, I was a two-sport two athlete. I did uh, football, obviously, and I did track. Um, I went out for basketball for about a mm, couple practices. I kind of... <laughs> I kind of thought, hey, I don't think that's for me. I, you know, the funny thing is, basketball is actually my first love. I love basketball to this day. I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. I don't know if we got any Kobe Bryant fans out there. Uh, uh, subject. So, <laughs> but, uh, basketball is my first love, but I ended up just kind of switching and, and, and uh, turning on the, to gas towards football. And uh, throughout my career at Kentwood, I, you know, I had all, all. You know, all teams, all team this, all all state this. Um, by the uh, end of my senior year, I was the top 50 back in the nation. Um, I went to the All American game. Um, I had scholarships from everywhere. I got I got letters. Literally, I would get letters every day about 10 of them. I'd get about 10 letters every day, and people would just bring them, bring them to my to the class, and I would have to pick them up. And till to this day, I got a big, huge box of letters. Um, but I end up. But those scholarships kind of hindered me because I, or my grades kind of hindered those scholarships because I, I couldn't, I couldn't choose 
Um, I couldn't go to the school that I wanted to go to because of my grades. I had a 1.2 grade average starting starting out in, in high school. And a 1.2 grade average, you can't do really much or nothing from that. And so by the end of college or by, or by the end of uh, my high school career, I ended up raising into like a 2.5 and ended up getting into um, the University of Washington and accepting that scholarship. Huskies. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, starting my 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 UW career um, again, I was in Washington. Uh, the hype was big. I was a big running back coming out. Uh, all cameras were on me. Being from Washington State, I had the city behind my back. I had everybody rooting for me. I was coming in during the Sarkeesian years. So it was a new era for everything. I think. The year prior, they had went 0 and 12, so they were looking for a oh, brand yeah. new start. Yeah. And so, for me, it was good because I was like, "Gosh, this is great. This is where I can start my career off. This is where I start making a name for myself. This is where I just this is this is it. This is this is what I worked for. This this is this is this is it right here." And so, I end up for all that hard work playing my true freshman year. Um, I still remember it to to this day. It was. It was uh, versus uh, the Oregon Ducks, and um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> which we did not win this game, but we um, we were down on the goal line, and um, coach called me, "Dude, it's Julian." I kind of like stuttered at, or kind of looked at him. Wait, you want me to go in this huge game? Like, what's going on? Calls me in. I go in, and um, I, I get in there. I play my butt off. Playing my butt off to the whistle, tried to punch it into the end zone, didn't, didn't, wasn't able to get it in. But at the end of the game, coach said, "You know what? You went out there, you played a heck of a game. Let's go get him next time." And so, for me, I was ready. I was like, "This is my time." Coach believes in me. The team believes in me. The city's behind my back. Let's go. So throughout the season, I'm getting playing time, getting a little bit more playing time as usual, kind of moving up the depth chart a little bit, going from. The third back to the second back behind uh, Chris Polk um, until um, the Apple Cup, the Wazoo game. Um, and I know a lot of you guys know about UW and Wazoo. This is the, like the biggest game of the year. It doesn't matter what the records are, it doesn't matter who's doing what. This is the biggest game of the year. And so it's about fourth quarter and uh, didn't play that much during this game, and fourth quarter rolls around, coach calls my name. It's me, just come in. <laughs> go, okay, I'm ready. Now I get in, uh, we're driving down, going past the 50. I get in, the first run, it's about, it's about 10 yards, boom. Go down the sideline. I'm feeling good, I pop up, I get hit, pop up, I'm ready for the next play. Um, coach calls my name again, boom, it's another about 10 yard run. So we're all the way down to about the 30 yard line now. And I'm, from there, I'm smelling the end zone. I didn't get a chance to punch it in at Oregon. So from now, I'm like, oh, we got it. We got this team on the wraps. Sorry if there's any Wazoo fan, uh, fans out here, but they were, to me, I was like, this team is weak right now. We got this. So, um, and for some reason, coach kept, kept calling my name. And, I, and there, was, there was a couple plays. So the next player, I get the ball, run into the left. Boom, I get hit out of bounds. I fumble the ball. Nobody really sees that. And I, but it's in my head, like, gosh, I fumble the ball. Can't do that. It's a big game. Come on, D. I'm kind of talking to myself, pumping myself up. Uh, couple other plays go past. He passed, you know, we do some, some play, uh, passing plays, pass a couple wide receivers. And then my name is called again. We're at about the 10 yard line. So I get the ball again, said, so like, I'm going down the lane. On the right side, I see the end zone at about three yards. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is it. I'm gonna be the savior, first touchdown. Here we go. Boom, I fumble again. And this time, Wazoo recovers it. Yeah. And at that moment, uh, being a big game and having it on the line, I still remember Coach yelling in my face. Not kind words at all. Um, if you can just imagine <laughs> being in that position in a big game, how that coach 
you know, was talking to me, it wasn't good because I felt like right at that moment, everything that I've been working for was just gone like that. The trust from the coaches was gone like that. Didn't get to see the field the rest of the year from that. Um, I didn't get to see the field the year after from that, except a couple plays on special teams. And so for me, from that, I started to, started to be coming, I started to come into a deep hole. I started to, to, to veer off from a lot of my friends um, that I would hang out with, that a lot of my childhood friends that I would hang out with. I started heavily drinking. I've never been a heavily, I was never a heavily drinker back then. Um, I would just literally go to parties and get drunk and kind of end up where I would end up or I would end up at somebody's house that I had no business being at. And from that, I just, I end up being in a deep state of depression. And at that moment, I really, I know I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know that I was an alcoholic. I didn't know that uh, I was mistreating my girlfriend. I didn't know that I was shutting out my family. I didn't know that I was in a, a, a deep depression to the point where I really have thoughts about, man, it, is this life for me? Is, is this, do I want to be here right now or do I want to still continue to live? And I don't know if you guys have ever been in that state or been, been at a moment to where you're like, man, I don't, I don't know, God, if, if this time on earth is for me, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all because you feel all alone. You feel by yourself. You feel that nobody can help you. You feel like you're just in a deep hole. But somehow I knew that I needed to get out of that. And so from there, I ended my, my second year at uh, UW and ended up transferring. I ended up going and talking to my coach and saying, hey, you know what? I need a fresh start. I need a new start. I need a, a new place to, to begin my new life again. Because I knew if I would have kept going down that road that I was going down, I know I wouldn't be in this position that I'm in today. Um, either I'd be on the streets or I would just be somewhere where, where it wasn't good for me. So I went to my coach and I said, hey, you know, I didn't tell him what the reason was for, but I said, you know what, I need a new start. And he said, you know what, okay. I never, for me, I never, uh, as for my coaches, I never mistreated them wrong. I always treated them with respect, and I worked hard and kindness. And so for them, it was easy to grant me that transfer, those, those, that transfer for me to go to Eastern. And so here I am over at Eastern, and I'm like, okay, here we go. You know, I'm a big man on campus again. Uh, I'm, I'm about a 230 pound back coming from uh, UW, and at Eastern, the backs are, you know, the backs, they use it around 180 pounds, 200 pounds. So for me, I'm like, oh, here we go. This is, this is, this is, it's gonna be golden. I'm gonna ride my ticket to the NFL and, and be able to do whatever I wanna do. And the coaches were hyping me up again. They were believing in me. It was like the same thing that was happening at UW was happening at Eastern. And I was supposed to be that savior again. I was supposed to be that guy to bring this team to the top. Um, and what better way when I had transferred, I knew that I would get a chance to play UW that first game. So I was like, oh, this is great. I looked on the schedule, we're playing UW. Ah, oh, what better way to get revenge on your old team than playing for the new team? <laughs> and so that whole summer, you know, I was hyping these guys up. I was like, man, these guys, they play football just like we play football. You know, we put on the same cleats as they put on the same cleats. We catch the same ball as they catch the same ball. Because they looked up to these guys like they were just these gods that, you know, yeah. these D1 football athletes that are just gods. I'm like, no, <laughs> we are all the same people and we just go to a different school. And so um, the game comes around, I'm all jacked, I'm getting the team jacked. You know, I get to start that game. And uh, I didn't have too high of a game. I think I had about 50 yards rushing. But the relief was, you know what, I think I'm getting back into football mode again. I think I'm getting back into, um, into 
the love of the game in the end. And I knew I had to because at that time when I had transferred to Eastern, I had a family now. I had a newborn son that was being born that, that spring uh, when I transferred. So I knew not only did I have to get my act right for the school and for everybody else, I had to get my act right for my family now. Because not only, I'm not just playing for myself, I'm playing for my, my son too and my wife. And so going to the season, having, having a great season, um, um, Usually Eastern's at the top of the charts, making the playoffs, having a big playoff run, and usually making a couple championships. But for some year, I think that year we went six and five. We went six and five, we didn't have too great of a year. But there was one game that I remember where I was like, here, I got my chance again. Here's where I can be on the map again. Here's where I can set myself apart from everybody else. Here's where I can say, hey, you know that kid from Kentwood, that kid from Kent, he's back. Um, I don't know if you guys follow the D1 AA football, but it was Eastern versus Montana. And just like the Apple Cup, how that yeah. game is really big, yeah. this game is huge. It's, it's, it's the same thing, but just at that at, at uh, Eastern's level. And we, you know, we're going into the game, we need this win to get into the playoffs. I think they needed the, the same win. These wins always matter when it comes down for playoff time at the end of the season. And so we're going down. It's funny because it's like a similar situation as it was at UW. We're going down, we're driving. Um, at that time, I was kind of, I didn't start that game, but towards the end of the season, I, I lost my starting job. Um, and for whatever reason, I lost my starting job. And so they were, they were going with somebody else called, his name was Mario Brown. But we would rotate every now and then when he would get tired, I would go in and give him a blow and, and come back up. And this point in the game, it was about, it was the fourth quarter, about a minute left. And we were all the way down at the three yard line. And I get the call. Bronson, you're in. Boom. Okay, here we go. It's gonna be a piece of cake. Yeah. You know, get this ball in the end zone, 230 pounds, ain't nobody stopping me. You know, I got the attitude. Seriously, like Marshawn Lynch, like, look, give me the ball, ain't nobody stopping me. Yeah. And so uh, I go in, set height, they give the ball to me on first down. Go try to punch it in on the left side. Boom. I get a stop. One. Okay. <laughs> you guys got one. You guys got one. Uh, but there's no way you guys are stopping me a second time, definitely not a third time. And so, coach, I see coach on the sideline, feed him again, feed him again. And the whole team, feed him again, feed him again. So, for me, I'm having the, 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 the team has my back. The coach has my back. So I'm like, all right, here we go. Here we go. He gives the ball to me again. Boom. <clears throat> try to cut up to the right side, try to go in between the tackles. It stopped again. Now I'm down to the one yard line. Get about a yard, now I'm down to the one yard line. Clock's running down, we only have one timeout. So after that, we call timeout. Boom. Coach comes over to the side and says, You know, it's all right. You know, I believe in you. We're going to get this. We're going to win the game. We're going to go home. And, uh, you know, and that, that's all she wrote. I'm like, Okay, okay. But he says, We're going to do this, though. We're going to put you at fullback now and bring Mario in as tailback to be like a, to have a, a diversion. So they think he's getting the ball, and you're actually still getting the ball. I go, okay, cool. Well, that works. We we'll go back out. Third down, all smiles on my face. I'm like, okay, you put me at fullback. I'm even closer to the end zone yeah. than even before. So I get the ball. Said hi. Boom. I get stopped again. And I'm like, at this point in time, now it's fourth down, the clock's running. At this point in time, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what, what is going on? Like, this should not be possible. I should not get stopped three times. You know, I'm supposed to be the man. I'm supposed to be the man on campus. I'm supposed to be the savior. What's going on? And uh, so we look over, and Gary Hopkins, we look over, and there's no way I'm thinking the coach is going to give me the ball. Like, give it to Bronson. Give it to him again. Give it to him again. It's going like this. I'm like, okay, here we go. Game's on the line. This is it. Come on, D. Punch it in so we can go home, party on the bus. Do some hollering and shouting, and let's go. Clock's running down, 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, he, 
running at that time, lets her run down, said hi, boom. I get stopped again. And at this point in time, oh my gosh, why can't I ever catch a break? I feel like I put countless hours in, day and night. My dedication is there. I literally work harder than anybody else on the planet. And I know this because I just, there's nothing that can stop me from anybody else work, uh, out compete me. And so, at this point, I'm just torn. I'm torn. I don't know what's going on. It's like, it's like trying to run through a brick wall and it's not moving at all. And as for you guys, I know there's been situations where you're like, man, I go to this interview. Why can I get this interview and that other person getting that interview? I have to, I've, I've submitted my application 10 times. Or why can I talk to this girl when this guy clearly doesn't have a shot he gets her and, and I can't get through her? And, and it hurts. You know, and, and you think, and you know you, you have worked so hard to get to that point. So you, you have worked so hard to get to that girl, so hard to try to get that job, but for some reason, it's not meant for you. The brick wall just does not move for whatever reason. Yeah. And it hurts. I remember going home on that bus ride, and I tell you, um, I was boohooing like there was no tomorrow. Yeah. And not just crying because I wanted that touchdown, but I wanted to be noticed. I wanted somebody to, I wanted to be on a pedestal for, for once. I wanted to be looked at like, man, you saved us, thank you. Like, you won the game for us. And for some reason, it, that didn't happen. The bus hour was six hours long. And for six hours, I cried. I cried, I cried, I cried, and I felt like there was nothing else I could do. There was, there was no other feeling I could feel. There was no other way I could express myself. So I just sat on the bus and cried with my head over, head over uh, my jacket over my head. And I got home and I got in the car with my wife. She said, baby, okay? I said, yeah, you know, kind of, you know how you're trying to, not trying, not trying to show your wife or your girlfriend whatever that you're crying. So you're not trying to really say too many words. You're like, yeah, yeah oh, I'm okay, you know, because if you say too many words, you just start boohooing all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm like, yeah, I'm okay, you know. She's like, yeah, you did a good, you know, you did a good job. I'm like, hey, really? I mean, did you not see the game? <laughs> Obviously, we lost. So I just thought that night, and. Uh, Right then and there, I was like, you know what? My love for the game is gone. I don't want to play anymore. I don't want to see football anymore. I don't want to do it no more. I can't do it. Because I just felt like every time something, a door is there, and I feel like it's open and it's there, for some reason, that, that opportunity for me, I can't step out and take it. I can't take it like that. This other guy who doesn't practice as hard, but he's getting all the glory. Or um, this guy who doesn't study for a test, and for some reason he's getting an A in the test when I stayed up all night to study for that test. And for me, I'm like, gosh, why can't something exciting happen for me? And not me not watch everybody else get the fame and glory. So the next day I, I go in. You know, I'm really frustrated. I go straight to coach and uh, said, hey, um, I don't want to play football anymore. And he goes, uh, you sure? I go, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm not playing it. I'm playing for everybody else. I'm not playing it for myself. I have no love for the game. I let down my teammates. You know, I let down you guys. Not just from that game, but it's been like that my whole life. He goes, you know, he goes, yeah, I understand, I understand. He goes, you know, just take a few days, take a few days to think about it and come back to me. 
And I said, Coach, I, you know, my mind is made up. I'm going to take a few days, but I'm done. I don't, I'm not having fun, first off. And if I'm not having fun, I'm just going to go out there and get hurt. And so why well, take a few days? He's like, no, trust me, take a few days and come back to talk to me. And so I, I took a few days, um, went home and, and sat down with my family and, and looked kind of sat down with my son and, and looked at him and saying like, man, if I really quit right now, what am I going to tell him? If I really give up right now, not only am I throwing away my football career, I'm also throwing away the scholarship that I'm on. So if I'm throwing away the scholarship I'm on, then I'm throwing away my, my degree. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna tell him when he sees all the pictures of me from football? When he says, Dad, did, did you play for that red and white team? That, that yeah, I said, I did. Well, what happened? What do I tell him then? Mm -hmm. And so I thought about this, this, these next couple of, this next couple of days and I, and I felt that there was something missing. My gosh, you know, I, just, I don't get it. I work hard, I put endless hours in, you know, I go above and beyond, I do the extra, I go the extra mile, I do more than everybody else, and I know this for a fact. I, I know this. What, God, what is missing? So I started to, I remember getting down on my knees and, and praying, and for me, I grew up in the church. I was born and raised in the Baptist church. And I, so for me, I knew my rights and my wrong. But for me, at that point in time, I really needed to firmly believe for myself and not just, oh yeah, I go to church, I'm a, I'm a man of faith, yeah. But I needed to believe that God was with me and that he controlled my path. And at that time, I remember really just beginning to pray. I didn't really know how to pray or, or what I was praying for, but I know I needed to seek him some way in some form. I know instead of playing for myself, if I wanted to make this work, I needed to start playing for him. I needed to start letting him lead and me follow instead of me just playing just to get the glory and just to get the fame. I needed to start playing for him. Yes. And so, I take those next couple of days and, and kind of grab my wife with me and said, hey, let's just, let's dig in the Bible. Let's dig, let's, let's see what we can find. Let's see if we can find some wisdom. Let's, let's go ask God for some questions because for some reason, I don't have any answers. I don't know. I'm, I, I don't want to play right now, but I think there's something else that I'm missing that I need to put in place in my life for me to get that love of the game again. So it started the next couple of days, started praying, started seeking out God, and, and for some reason I had a coach, I was, I was getting phone calls from my friends, and I was getting messages from my coach, hey, when are you coming back? It took about three or four days um, to think about it. And after those three or four days of just, for whatever I was looking at in the Bible, whatever touched my heart, my mind changed. And I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna play, but this time, like I said, I'm not playing for this team. I'm playing for God. And whatever else they wanna do, it doesn't matter. They cannot play me. They can play me as much as they want. They can still kick me off the team if they want, but I'm gonna decide to play for God and see where that takes me. Yeah. And see how far that And so I go back in and I say, hey coach, you know, um, I'm ready to I'm ready to play again. Um, I'm ready to lead this team. He goes, great, you know. Um, these guys really, they really look up, up to you as a leader. You know, they really love what the work that you do, even though you don't talk a lot, but you, you sure do show a lot. Um, and at my time at Eastern, 
Um, the rest of my career wasn't as planned as I wanted to go, but I know it was planned as God wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't have the huge stats that I wanted. I didn't have the the uh, all the touchdowns I wanted, but I know God planned this out perfectly to how He wanted it. And again, that's all that matters to me. Yeah. Um, so upon, upon being an Eastern, I went through, decided, made up my mind. Like, you know what? It's me and you, God. Let, let's 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 go through this process together. You know what? No matter what anybody else says, I'm gonna trust you and you only. Mm -hmm. So I started going through this training process, and this was probably the best time that I had had with just me, myself, and God. I was, I was, it was about a two month period. I would be gone down to Florida and back. I would go to California and back. I would go to Texas and back. Literally for about two months. From training to going to different camps, going to CFL camps, going to NFL camps, to going to meet different agents, to go to just get my face out, to, to, to see different things. But all along that journey, I felt like my journey with God was just getting stronger. Like the, 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 the more trips, the more time I spent alone with myself and God, the more I just got stronger in my belief that like, hey, man, God's got a plan. He, he knows what he's working up right now. The more belief that he put in me, the more confidence that he put in me to be able to, to, to say, hey, I can do this, you know? My love for the game was never gone. I just had things twisted and turned all around in the wrong places. And so I started going, like I said, when I ended up making it, I did this combine, ended up making it to Detroit, and from Detroit, from there, that was kind of like a, uh, the real combine, but it was still a fake one. So basically the, the thing next to the real combine. And there was only about 10 backs there, and Again, you know, I felt like I performed pretty good and end up getting um, a phone call from, through all those camps from the Seahawks. I remember sitting sitting in my room and I was sitting, I was sitting in the living room and looking at the uh, looking at the draft and they called the last name. I was like, gosh, well, oops. God gave it all I got, you know, what's next? And so I remember turning off the TV and walking out the room, starting to put on my shoes and was probably gonna go boo-hoo, cry my eyes out again. <laughs> but, um, but my phone rang. I was like, okay, somebody call me and say they're sorry, you know, you'll get it next time. And uh, I pick it up, it's a 425 number. And he goes, hey, uh, hi, is this uh, Demetrius Bronson? I go, yeah, this is him. Hey, this, this is uh, such and such from the Seattle Seahawks. We're, you know, we want to meet, uh, we want you to come out to the uh, rookie camp and want to, um, for there you have a chance to get signed to the team. Let me back up a little bit. So when he said, this is a guy from the Seattle Seahawks, literally, my <laughs> mouth was just like, hey, this is the guy from Seattle Seahawks. And whatever he said after that, I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> just kind of like, <laughs> literally, and then he, you know, we, he, after he did his whole introduction and said who he was, he goes, all right, so we need to fill out some information, so what's your name? <laughs> and he was like, um, uh, uh, Demetrius, okay, how do you spell it? D, E, I, I literally, I couldn't spell my name, I, didn't know my name her. I was so just, I, I don't know where I was, I, I just, I wasn't there. But I was so excited that I, I, I could, I mean, it's bad when you can't remember your name and your date of birth. And so, basically what he was saying was that he, you know, I'm going to invite you out to uh, the rookie mini camp and you have a chance to go prove yourself and, and get on the team. Great. My, my, uh, my wife comes down, hey, what did he say? Babe, I just, I don't know, it's still the Seahawks. That's about it. I don't know what he said. So, Great, yeah, woo! You know, and so... Um, you know, and, and from there, uh, I walk in, I remember walking into the, to the, to 
to the Seahawks uh, headquarters and you know see all see like Earl and Marshawn and I'm like you know Cam and I'm like uh, you know it's funny some of the uh, the, uh, the looks I was getting from some some of the, the younger kids over there and stuff like that like gosh can I go talk to him like don't yes you come talk to me but it was the same looks that I was giving Marshawn and kind of like Cam I'm like gosh hey. Hey guys, hey, you know, and, um, and so that's why I just laugh and you know people give me lit. So I'm like, man, I am nobody. Just come up and say hi. Man. I'm the same person like you guys. So um, yeah, I remember walking in that day. And we had a meeting for the rookies, and uh, Pete Carroll was speaking, and I remember him saying, you know, yeah, you know, we're gonna go out and practice. We're gonna go out and do this. You know. Um, Make sure your P's and Q's be perfect. And he said two things. We want effort and we're coaching on how hard you work. And I'm like, that is my middle name. I, I can do that. <laughs> effort and work hard? Oh, psh. okay. It's, yeah. it's over. So we go out to practice for the next day. The mini camp was three days. I tell you, I had never ran so hard and so fast and caught the ball so well in my life. Literally, you know, it, it, it's really amazing how God works because I, I really felt like there was an extra force on me because I, I didn't feel like myself. I felt like there was an extra push. There was an extra, some extra wings on me. There was some extra, uh, something on my feet. And, and it didn't matter what coach asked me to do. I would just do it with great effort and going on. Uh, 100%. Yeah. And so from there, end up landing me on the, uh, after the camp, my agent called me. He said, hey, uh, the Seahawks want to sign you. Oh my like, gosh, man. I, this, I, honestly, I didn't know how to feel. You know, yeah. I remember being in a room <laughs> with one of the other running backs. He's like, I was like, he's like, what did he say? I said, oh, yeah, they want to sign me. He was like, man, are you jacked? And, you know, I was like, yeah. I didn't know how to feel. I was really calm. Like, I'll call my friends. Yeah, see how it's me. What? <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man, but you got a lot of work to do. And so I ended up, ended up getting signed. And from there, that's when my journey started to take off even more. And it really took off when I, it was the first game um, against the Denver Broncos. And uh, remember Coach saying, hey, everybody's going to play. Everybody's going to play. And, Everybody's gonna get a chance to showcase their talent. So I'm waiting, you know, I, I go out in pregame, you know, I'm like, gosh, this is really cool. Like, I'm one of the guys, like, you know? and still to this day, it takes me a minute, even when I'm in the room with, with Marshawn or in the room with Robert Turbin or I see Sherman or I see um, Russ, it, it really takes me a minute to say like, man, I'm not, NFL player, like it's it, it, it's so crazy. I'm an NFL running back, just like these guys, you know. Um, so I remember just being on the field, kind of going through warm ups, nervous as all get out. But um, I was I was ready to go. I was ready to go. I was ready to showcase my talents again. And my gosh, you know how, how great is this? You know, making it to this level, being that one percent, being a free agent. You know how. Jeez, how God bless me with this. And so, the game's going on, I'm watching these guys. This, this, this is unreal. I'm watching these guys and plays going on and go through halftime and now third quarter rolls around, I know my time's coming, I'm hoping my time's coming. Boom, Demetrius, you're in. Oh, okay, gosh, here we go, here we go, come on, come on, here we go. That's what you work for. And uh, so we're on the 50 yard line. And uh, they give me the ball, first play, they give me the ball. Boom. Oh, it's like a seven yard run. And everybody's jacked, the coaches are jacked. They're like, man, do you know how good that is? I'm like, all right, you know, calm down. Like, it's just first run, you know. <laughs> and uh, I get the ball again. Coach, get, curse, Coach Carroll gives me the ball again. For some reason, he's loving what I'm doing. Uh, I think of myself as a downhill runner. That's all I know how to do. He's like, man, you're running downhill, one cut downhill. You know, we can't teach that. I'm like, well, I don't, really, what I'm really running away from is those linebackers that's trying to catch them. So that's the real thing, that's the real thing. So, 
you know, I get the ball again, and it's another five-yard run. And uh, he gives it to me again. He gives it to me three times in a row. And I think that one's like a three or four-yard run. And then he takes me out and puts somebody else in. And I, I sit out until fourth quarter, end of fourth quarter. And then he throws it back in. Let me just go back in. Fourth quarter, here we go. Kane is on the line. We are driving down. I think he, I go in about the 40 going in. And so, okay, deep breath. Here we go. Gosh, everybody's watching. Let's go. So, set hike, first play. He throws it down the sideline, throws it one of the wide right receivers, it's about, about a 10 yard, 10 yard pass. Okay, here we go. I think, if I can remember correctly, we're going no huddle offense. And so, uh, he's calling the plays, yelling the plays out to everybody, and then it's going to me. So I get the ball, going down the middle, boom. It's about a good seven yard run. Okay, here we go, here we go. We're at the 20 yard line, he's punching in. He gives the ball to me again on the left. Like a little lead play, it's a five yard, it's a five yard run. And uh, my gosh, here we go. We call a timeout. So now we're at the 15 yard line. Call a timeout. Come back in. We do a little, uh, a little pass off the uh, little inside pass, about three yards or three five yards onto the wide receiver and inside. Boom. Now we're down to the 10 yard line. Gives it to me again. I punch it in or I punch it down for about mm, about two or three yards. So now we're inching closer. We're at the we're at the board, about six the six yard line. Time is running down. If we score, we win. If we don't, we lose. Um, and we're getting down to that time again. Give me the ball again. I get it back to the five yard line. Call another timeout. And he goes, uh, "All right, we're gonna do a screen right." And I'm like, oh, "Gosh." Here we go, you know, all, this is what I've been working, this is what I've been working on. Uh, for me, um, I work on my hands a lot, because I think that's, everybody has a default, you know, with, with something, I think for me, it's not a default, but it's something I have to work a little harder in than, like say, running the ball. Running the ball comes really natural. Catching the ball is just a little bit harder for me. So he goes, yeah, we're gonna do a screen, screen right. Oh my gosh, here we go. He's like, yeah, this is gonna be wide open. Okay, great, touchdown, here we go. Set high. In the field game, everybody is watching. We are playing uh, the team that was in the Super Bowl last year. The whole uh, uh, city of Kent is watching, all my friends are watching. As I'm taking three steps to the right, going to the right, Tavares Jackson is in. I turn around, I see that my blockers in front of me, but I know once I catch the ball, it's gonna be a clear touchdown. First touchdown in my career, in the first game, in my NFL game. See the ball, I turn around, I'm like, oh, here we go. Boom, ball's on the ground. I stay on the ground for about two seconds, and then I pop up. And for me at that time, I'm hurting inside. I'm pissed off. That was my chance once again. And that's, for a split second, I go, why, God, <laughs> why couldn't I get it in at UW? Why couldn't I get it in at Eastern? Why, when I thought I was following your path and doing what you wanted me to do and thought I was doing the right things, why couldn't I, for some reason, get this easy touchdown right now? I went in the sideline, and this time I just I just sat there. I just always stood there. And at that time, <laughs> my mom actually calls me. She goes, man, you gotta be aware of the cameras. Like, you look like a freaking bull when you were on camera when you didn't catch that ball. I go, mom, I was pissed off. I go, man, I didn't know. <laughs> she goes, this is the NFL. They watch every move of you. Know? And I, I did go back, and I looked pretty pretty upset, but this time, instead of going, instead of turning to the bottle, which I did at Wazoo, instead of going to a, a state of depression, instead of shutting my friends off, instead of shutting my wife off, instead of thinking I'm losing the love for the game again, instead of just wanting to walk away, this time, that next day, 
I questioned God for a second, but I still knew, you know, I was like, you know what? My faith is still in God. Yeah, yeah. yeah and even though I questioned you, God, for that split second, you're in control. So that next day, I went to the, the ball machine and and um, I was catching balls. You know, still pretty upset, but I, I, I still knew. I was like, you know what? Something good is going to come out of this situation. God knows. I don't know what's going on, but something good is going to come out of these situations. So I'm catching balls, and all of a sudden, Pete Carroll has to walk by. And he's like, hey, what you doing? I was just catching balls. He just says a simple thing, like, he'll get it next time. And it's like, man, you know, for him to maybe see me out here catching balls and not moping around in the locker room and, and, and you know, kicking myself because I didn't catch the ball, that was probably huge for him. And, you know, knowing me, that was huge for me being out just willing to want to better myself and knowing that, you know what, everything is going to be okay. Um, and from all this, a lot of times you, you, you're, you're going to have more ups than you, than you have downs. You're going to have more success than you have faults. But in the end, you just can't give up on your grace. And you have to firmly believe that God has a plan for you. There's a scripture uh, on this, it's Hebrews 12, 1, and it says, And let us run with the endurance the race that God has set before us. Mm -hmm. Let me read that again. It says, And let us run with the race that God has set before us. Amen. So, in saying that, we're supposed to run our race, mm -hmm. not the race that, hey, my partner's running over here, or not the race that society <laughs> says that they want us to race, or not the race that my coach or your, your, your boss wants you to race, but run the race that is for you. Because right. if you try to veer off and run another race that's not for you, it's just going to come right back around and you're going to be right back in the same spot that you started from. Yeah. Yes. But if you run the race with God, He's going to show you yes. your plans. Yes. There's another one that says, in Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and plans not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and plans to give you future. God knows. It doesn't matter. I live, I go, I live by three things. Either you're going through a storm, either you're coming out of a storm, or either you're about to go through a storm. And in any of, in any of those situations, it doesn't matter where they're going in, coming out, and your boss is going in. You just have to know that God knows your future. You just have to know that God has a plan for you. You just have to firmly and believe that God has got your back. And if you run God's race and not your race, if you firmly believe, you know what, God, I want you to take control over my life. I want you to, 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 to be the head hold over my life. He will lead you to success. He yes. will show you the future. He will guide you in the right path. Um, and as for me, that's where I'm at right now. You know, I've been I've been cut three times from the CLC, uh, CLC office on practice floor. I've been hurt uh, two times. I'm currently hurt right now. But for some reason, I'm still on the team. A lot of times when you're on practice squad and you get hurt on practice squad, you are gone. You are chopped liver. Sayonara, yeah. goodbye. Yeah. Uh, this last time, I just got hurt about four weeks ago in OTAs. A lot of times they say, see ya, they cut you a little check and they say, see ya, go, go get healthy and go work out you know, for somebody else. But I firmly believe that only God knew the plans that he has for me. I can firmly sit here and say that, you know what? I don't have any worry. I don't have any doubt. I don't, I don't, I don't, I just know that God is in control of my life and that he holds the plans for me. Yes. Yes. And it doesn't matter what anybody else says, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. It doesn't, it just doesn't matter, but it just matters between me and God and he has the plans for me. Yes.
Yeah! Uh. It's your boy C's, man. C's! I told you from the jump, man. Uh, 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 I'm unashamed of the name. Uh, 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 uh. Jesus Christ! If I say Jesus in my song, they want me quiet. Uh. They say if I proclaim the name, then y'all won't buy it. Uh. Rather have me be blasphemous and tell a bunch of lies. Uh. Them dollars for my compromise. 